Hey, what's up, Speaker Fam? It is a beautiful Sunday in South Africa, and we are going to be taking a look at the Lavoche Ceph 184.03. Of course, this is an Italian design speaker, and it's pretty cool for a couple of reasons. One of which it's got some really good TS parameters at its price point, and that brings me to the second point: its price point. Right, these guys sell or retail for under seven thousand rand throughout the country, which makes this an extremely affordable, reasonably high-end driver. Right. And uh, if we run through the specs, one of the things that I'm looking for is what can I do with it, right? So generally speaking, QES uh, divided by your FS. So we're going to land up with an EBP that's going to be floating somewhere around about 80 to, I don't know, 85, 90, somewhere around there, which means I know that I'm going to get really good performance in a base reflex cabinet and possibly even something sneaky out of a slightly more advanced cabinet like a horn loaded driver or even a six order, right? Um, lots of power handling available to us with this particular driver with a program power rating of 3000 watts, which is pretty incredible. Um, it's a lot of power, guys. I, I promise you, like, you need, you know, at least. If you want to do 10 dBs worth of headroom, you're talking like a, a 20,000 watt with of amplifier. Um, so again, just like the DS115, which is rated out at 1700 watts AES, um, a lot of power, you need some big horses to back these drivers up and actually drive them to their full potential. Of course, FS is relatively good. We know that we're going to be able to reach down into the low 30s. Uh, generally speaking, I like to tune a cabinet, you know, about five to 10 hertz above the driver's FS. Um, relatively speaking the thing that might become a little bit of a catch so if we have a look generally at the parameters you might not know this um, we want to kind of go somewhere around about half of VAS in general right um, to get a nice really good alignment but you might find in this particular instance because we have a rated X max out to 13 mils we very well possibly are going to need a slightly oversized box with really big ports um, to kind of make this driver happen because we are simply going to have too much cone displacement relatively speaking to the volume of our box so that's something we're going to have to look out for right so I've already preloaded this into win ISD and I have done this twice and oh okay it looks like one is not loading or not giving us the description properly okay but it's both the same driver I promise you guys now in looking at the parameters you can see that the driver data integrity checks okay and essentially what this is doing is it's saying hey man you know from the general math that we are using to make sure that everything is okay everything is exactly that it's okay now on this guy over here you can see that the driver data integrity fails now the reason why it's failing is because when isd itself will actually work out the x max once you start punching in the height of the voice coil minus the gap height divided by two which is going to give you a one-way linear displacement but in reality all good speakers rise and if you give a good reading down here they actually tell you from ts parameters measured with cl uh, clip clip excuse me clipple right so firstly clipple is the very much the industry standard right uh, they tell you here that the x max is calculated as the height of the voice coil minus the gap height divided by two and that is where it ends in win isd however because they still have usable motor force it is plus the height of the gap divided by four which in fact gives us 13 mils worth of x max and when you actually go and punch this in right it's going to tell you that the driver data integrity fails and if we have a look over the driver X max height to the coil height to the gap right very important to understand so we are going to go next all right of course we've got a house full of people today so um, we're not going to be creating a studio based uh, video so it's given us actually let me step one back here quickly our EBP has landed up at 82 and if you actually have a look at this little display over here it says you evented dash bandpass box right the higher your EBP is the better they will normally function so for you guys building six order bandpass boxes for your car subs expecting to break records and uh, no it's not really going to happen you're not really going to be able to exploit that driver alignment or that box alignment guys uh, keep in mind if you've got a higher EBP drivers like with most of the products that are on the market so if you have a look at most of your star sounds and you know the all the local brands uh, they've got a very 
uh, low EBP. They're often sit under 50. So you know you actually best off in a closed box if you really want a really flat response, really good cone control. Um, and if you want to do something a little bit more extravagant, fourth order band pass is going to be for you. But in this particular instance, you know, with this being a professional subwoofer, uh, parameters are more ideal, right, for a vented box. Okay. So that is important to understand. Now what I'm going to do, I always pick the three basic alignments, which is going to be the Butterworth alignment, the Super Boom box, as well as a sub, right? Now I know that I'm most likely not going to use any of these alignments, okay? Because I'm going to have to optimize the cabinet. So I'm going to just write here, this is going to be our QB3, uh, create, write, and QB3 alignments, guys, uh, for those of you who don't understand, it's looking at the optimal tune roll off where we've got a combination between a very flat response and a very gradual roll off. And it's defined around Q points. And it's a little bit complicated to get into in the, in, in for beginners, but it actually is really easy to understand. So the higher the Q, the more the bump you're going to have, um, like your SPL car guys, you know, the very high Q, one hit wonders type of thing. Right, and our super boom box, most of the times it is going to be a slightly higher tune cabinet that does a little bit more um, SPL in the upper end of the base. So, you know, from like 50 hertz to 100 hertz, a little bit more efficient. Okay. And we are going to just write this down as our boom. Okay. Now, right off the bat, you'll see that our boom box is actually not giving us our boom box type of SPL. So we're not getting this rise, right? Again, the good parameters are starting to show, okay? So our boom box is actually rolling off far more gradually, which means that the way the driver's parameters have come together, you will find that once we even do our extended low frequency cabinets, right, or our sub alignment, that it's going to look very, very similar to these are the two, okay. And this is going to be sub. So what you'll find is that they're all going to be roughly the same volume, okay. Where with some speakers, if you do a QB3 alignment, it's going to be somewhere in the middle. If you do a boom box, it's invariably the smaller, higher tuned, higher SPL type of cabinet, and your sub is going to be the largest by some, right? And of course, uh, here we are. We kind of landing up in the same volume so this is always nice to see because it generally means that you know once you get your box size down you're pretty much going to be optimizing it for the best overall performance okay so something that i actually raised up on facebook recently um, is not all speakers can actually reach their power handling um, for a given size enclosure purely because they run out of cone displacement 13 mils and with all three alignments kind of landing the same, I'm going to guess we're going to get pretty close to handling the the rated AES power, right? So we can come in here, we can jump into 1,500 watts, and we're gonna jump into 1,500 watts. Now keep in mind, we haven't done anything with the boxes or the ports, right? And I'm gonna jump from here, and I'm gonna jump down to cone excursion. And lo and behold, we can see that our cone displacement right so there's a little red line that's drawn across this let's just actually make this a little bit bigger okay anything that overshoots this red line that is showing at 13 mils right we essentially running into problems we've actually started to run out of cone displacement and the reason why all speakers in most instances need some form of processing or filtering is because below the tuning of our box and our system x max goes out of control so even if we put 10 watts down, you can see this back end starts to become really raised really quickly. And let's go up to 500 watts. You can see even at 500 watts, guys, you need to start to filter your speaker while this thing can handle 3000 watts program. Um, so in all honesty, if you're not running some form of processing or some form of filtering on your system, you actually don't really know what you're missing. You, you're missing a huge leap in performance in terms of uh, quality of sound, um, lower distortion, it, everything gets better. So be aware of that, guys. Uh, but in this particular instance, drive is very well balanced, and uh, we know that we can have something to work with. Now, 
just to reinforce the statements about good parameters, right? Especially when we compare it to other drivers with a higher QTS and a lower EBP. Um, specifically for your car audio, guys, I want to show you something here quickly. Right, so we're going to do another box. We're going to take our, our driver. Uh, drop down for me, please. And I'm going to show you that when a driver's parameters are optimized to lend itself to a fourth order or a sixth order or a whatever order you are going to do, you will instantaneously see the advantage you will get. Right, if this EBP was 40 or 50, typically like most car audio subwoofers, you're not going to get the full advantage on a sixth order band pass. And if you try and push for that six order band pass to have the extra gain, right, that you can see, the likelihood is it's going to be massive, like four or five times bigger than what it needs to be. In reality, you're just wasting space. But watch here, right? We should be able to easily sneak in a four or five dBs without even trying by going to a six order band pass because our EBP and our parameters actually, you know, they allow it. Okay, so let's bump in a six order here quickly. And okay, let's come back down to our box. Now, of course, this defaults. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go roughly up to half of VAS or VAS, right, which is 130, give or take, on both ends. So we're going to do a one-to-one -one alignment. Okay. And I want to bump this up to at least, you know, two octaves. So 70 hertz would be a good start. Now we haven't looked at anything yet. Bang. And right off the bat, you guys can see we have got all this extra sensitivity that is suddenly starting to come out. And this, of course, is kind of peaky, which we'd want to obviously keep under control. But we can indeed get more bang for our buck within its usable bandwidth. Of course, I'm not going to focus on this uh, too much, but I just wanted to show you guys quickly that. You know, without going too excessive, we can indeed get a little bit more out of things. So, you know, keep that in mind, guys. Uh, six order is not necessarily always the way to go. Six order requires some pretty good parameters, and most drivers don't have those. There are, of course, some exceptions um, where some drivers might not be ideal, but they will lend themselves to the application. But keep that in mind because right now we're focusing on this Lovacher. So, we know that we can do some more extravagant design so to speak so if you want to do a six order we can if you want to do you know perhaps a one or two horn loaded enclosures the likelihood is it's not ideal but it's a very well balanced driver okay so I'm going to give this a quick little close and we're going to get rid of that so generally speaking guys we can see that the Lavoche SAF 184.03 without jumping into the cabinets as a whole is very well balanced if we have a look at our box sizes on our sub variation, it's giving us 130 liters, 129 liters, and 134 liters. Okay, so on our sub, if you really want to start to extend your low frequencies, we're going to have to go up in volume, right? So let's drop this guy out to about 220 liters, and you know, if you wanted, you could tune it a little bit lower, right, to try and really get the full extension out. Um, very very well balanced right off the bat now of course my job now is to actually turn this into an end product so when you walk into a sound select or an A1 or an anal agencies you know that you're going to be getting the best all-round cabinet so I'm most likely going to be doing maybe four cabinets for this particular guy I'm going to be doing some touring some compact touring cabinets where low distortion um, and other characteristics are looked at as you know you want a small box you want it to perform under all conditions and clarity and um, you know distortion is more important to you than than being loud um, for touring applications then we're going to possibly do a single and a double for both as well as then jump into some low frequency hunting cabinets right so they're going to be slightly larger they're going to be extended low frequency design cabinets and it's for those of you guys who really want to reach down into the low 30s for your ama piano uh, not many boxes can really go as low as you think um, but we're going to make that happen with this particular product and of course because it can the likelihood is paraflex obviously being one of the most popular cabinets in the market um, globally speaking from a DIY aspect I'm going to make some plans available for um, Africa for this particular driver 
and uh, we're going to get you guys banging on some really big high performance cabinets that are going to be free for you to download and of course you can have it bought by us out of various materials so for our Lavoche SF184.03 really right off the bat things look pretty good i can't wait to actually share some of the cabinet design layout for you and of course you're going to be able to buy them from your favorite retailer throughout south africa and our neighboring borders